Hi everyone. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about predatory journals. I'm getting more and more upset day by day, seeing predatory journals grow and seeing my friends and colleagues publishing predatory journals, especially my colleagues and friends uh, living in Asian countries or African countries. And uh, also I see in social media the way the predatory publishers are are spreading their, their journals and people are not evaluating properly the journals and submitting and publishing in those predatory journals. So this video is dedicated to create awareness about predatory journals and why this is not good science and why this does not count and why, and why this is kind of a waste of your time and effort as well. So first of all, I'll be talking about academic publishing categories, what are predatory journals, size of the business, characteristics of predatory journals, why does it matter, why should you care, and checklist to avoid predatory journals, and what actions you should take immediately. So first of all, uh, we researchers, we, we write papers, we do research, and then we want to disseminate it among others so that others can learn about our findings and, and implement those findings in their life or in society to make to, to make our life better. Okay. So normally scientists publish their articles in journals. In the earlier days, universities were having dedicated journals and researchers were publishing there. But now we have these large uh, journals under large publishers which were maybe a long time back, uh, which were also run by universities, but now many of them are under some publishers like Elsevier, Springer, Emerald. So we can publish in these journals. We can also self archive our research papers as well. But normally for scientists, the research has more value when a research finding has more value when it is published in a reputed journal. Because when we publish in a reputed journal, the, the study goes through peer review, rigorous peer review, and it is validated by peers and editors. So we know that what is presented there is valid and reliable and true knowledge. Okay, so that's why we value journal publications more than only self-archiving. Self Self-archiving means that you just write something and you can store it somewhere. That is not peer-reviewed. Okay? But when we, it comes to publishing in journals, there are three options. We can publish in open access journal. We can publish in hybrid journals. Hybrid journals means that they have a subscription-based system for universities, but they also offer open access publication. If you pay the article processing fee, they will publish your article as open access. Then we have closed journals, which only publish subscription-based uh, articles. Okay, they, they, they don't publish open access. Normally, when you publish in open access journals, then you have to pay the article processing fee. There are some costs associated with publication, hosting, and maintaining it for lifelong. So the server, maintaining the server, and everything. So there are some costs behind so you have to pay and hybrid journals when it is published on a subscription based track then the universities they make the money from universities and research organization who subscribe to them and then we if you pay for open access then your article will be shared with everyone freely and you have to pay the fee normally in good journals the open access fee is rather high like above one thousand dollars to up to three four thousand but then we can self-archive our studies. Like if you publish something in, in open access, you can self-archive it in, in ResearchGate, in academia, and there are other subject repositories. And sometimes in hybrid journals, if you publish under subscription track, still you can archive it in ResearchGate in academia, but you have to archive the post pre version of that. I will make another video on that, how to, how to archive your published studies in ResearchGate. But anyway, and for closed journals, you cannot archive it. It will be normally is disseminated. The research will be disseminated by 
the journal itself, the journal publisher itself. So let's move to predatory journals. What are they? There are predatory journals. They could be three categories, uh, predatory publishers. So some predatory journals are, are, are under predatory publishers. Some are standalone journal. It's only one journal. And some are hijacked journal. This happens recent days as well. Like some good journals are suddenly hijacked by, or, or, or maybe bought by a predatory publisher or bought by a predatory co company or was, they have somehow hacked the journal and made turned it turned it into a predatory journal these things happens as well and the main issue is that their model is based on solely based on profit they don't care about science they can't, don't care about knowledge but they are only making money and their open access fee is very less uh, normally like thirty dollar fifty dollar one hundred dollars something like that so in good journals, the open access fee is thousand or more than thousand dollars. But in, in predatory journals, it would be often a smaller amount of money, which is easier, which is easier to pay for people from developing countries. And do not provide the service. They do not provide the service they are supposed to. The most important thing is that they do not do any peer review. Whatever you give them, they accept it and they publish it. Also, they do not provide any copy editing service, which they are supposed to do. Okay, they will tell you to format everything and send them. So these are the two major things, uh, major problems with predatory journals. The biggest problem is that they do not do any PR if they publish whatever you give them. So that's why that's why when you publish in predatory journals, your, your research is not validated, it's not reliable because it has not gone through a peer review uh, of the experts. And how big is the business? I collected some data from a published study. And here you can see like in 2011, there were 18 predatory publishers, while in 2016, we have 923. So if you look into the growth, it's like boom, that's a huge growth. And if we look into the stand alone number of predatory journals, 2013, we had 126, 2016, we have 882. And also, hijack journals increased a lot in 2015 from 30 to 2000, uh, in 2016, we have 101. So this is a big business and it's, it's becoming a huge problem for science. So let's look into some characteristics of predatory publishers or journals. So what they would do is they will write authors some aggressive emails for paper submission. They will pick your email address from some websites or uh, some other places if you have published a paper or two and they will write you emails that okay we would like to invite you to submit a paper we are impressed by your paper that you published in that journal blah 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 so and they will be like okay we are having an issue next month please submit your paper now it will be accepted in one month so they write very aggressive emails for paper submission and we'll see that they will perform no editorial work or peer review because they will uh, they will promise you the publication date like one week or two weeks something like that and in such a short time it is really not possible to do any peer review or editorial work and they're very quick in, in responding one to four weeks in accepting and publishing articles which is yeah really not possible most of the cases they will have no board members or fake board members in the website. And often they mimic reputable journal websites to confuse you. So you will think like, okay, it is that good journal, but then actually it's not. So they try to mimic other good journals. And here I have an example of an email I got some time back. Okay. Uh, like when I talk about aggressive emails, so this is an example. I get many emails like this every day. Maybe you are also getting it. Sometimes some scholars are happy they are getting this email. They, are, they feel like, okay, people are noticing my work and all these things. But no, that's not really true. These are predatory publishers. Okay. And not only these publications, but it can happen for conferences as well. I, I receive many emails uh, to, to give lecture as a chief guest in some conferences. I'm a young scholar, I'm a young professor, not yet a top professor, so that I'll get invitations uh, very frequently to give uh, lecture as a chief guest in, in some conferences. Anyway, 
So here you see uh, that submissions uh, open for volume four, issue five. At three to five days after submission, they will give you acceptance notification and publication is within 48 hours after you pay the fee. So they all they care about is mostly uh, the, the fee and the corporate form, you know. So this is a big problem actually. And some other characteristics are like, they will have no legitimate contract information, contact information or address of the publisher listed in their website or, or anywhere in, 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 their, in their profile. They will claim false impact factor, as you can see here in the image below, 7.17 impact factor, IC impact factor. We don't know about IC. What is IC impact factor? I have never heard of it. We know only the impact factor that is given by Thomson Reuters. And 7.17 is really high. That means really good journals, but these journals is a rubbish journals. It's, it's yeah, I'm not going to mention the name, but this is a rubbish journal. They do no peer review, nothing. And they also claim false indexing information, as you can see in the bottom left picture here. I mean, these are not really any index. Index, uh, the, the most important indexing are Thomson Reuters, that ISIU websites, and then it's Coopers. And also you can see here like Google Scholar. I mean, Google Scholar, what kind of indexing is that? Every paper comes in Google Scholar anyway. And they have a very high acceptance rate. 100% acceptance. Whatever you give, they just publish it. As long as you pay them the fee, they will publish it. And they don't check for plagiarism and other unethical means of science, other unethical issues in research. So you will see that many published, many papers published in predatory journals have issues of plagiarism and other uh, fraud data and other things. You know, why should we care? First of all, predatory publications does not count. It, it just doesn't count. It does not count as scientific knowledge, loss of time, effort, and money. And you are helping their business to grow. And you are having a negative impact on your career. Colleagues may come to you and they tell that, okay, I'm publishing 10 papers a year. And then you look into their papers, you see they're publishing in predatory journals. In developed countries, those does not count as science, as knowledge, and as publications. Those does not count for promotion. And even that can have a negative impact. If you publish in predatory journals, you will not get promotion. You can, it will have a negative impact. You will not get a job. You can be rejected from different things. You can be rejected from grant application. And yeah, it will have a very negative impact. But in developing countries, uh, this is not an, this issue needs some attention. Uh, in developing countries, is still in, in many cases, people are publishing in this kind of journals to get promotion and to just keep saying other people that they're publishing many papers a year. And yeah, so this is what normally happens that oh, you have got an invitation to submit to a journal. But then critically evaluate the invitation source look into the language, they will be overly flattering. And the journal title will be very broad. They will have science, engineering, medicine, whatever field they can cover in the journal title. And it will be normally a completely new journal, like new volumes and fewer volumes and fewer issues. And offering discount on Christmas, it happened to me actually, you know, they were like, they wrote me an email. If you publish uh, now, we are giving Christmas offers. For one publication fee, you can publish two papers. And of course, there will be no reputable publisher behind these journals. A reputable publisher, I mean Emerald, Springer, Nature, Elsevier, uh, Taylor and Francis. So these are the reputable publishers. This you should try to you should target these publishers and their journals to publish your paper. So now I will talk, I'll be talking about a checklist to Make sure that you are not publishing in predatory journals. First of all, look into the Bill's list. Uh, Bill, he made a list of predatory, predatory publishers. You can also find the list in our website in Research Hub, in www.researchhub.org. You can find the list there as well. Uh, so look into the list and any journal listed there should be avoided for publishing. And here, we, we have 
DOHA directory of open access journals also check there if you are trying to if you are going to publish in open access journal check if your journal is listed there if not avoid it they list uh, more or less all the good open access journals journal rankings look into publish or perish and also there is a Norwegian database have a look there if you are in business and management look into the ABS ranking I will put the I will put the web links of these rankings uh, in, the, in the detail of the video. Have a look there. Indexing, uh, the two large ones, the Scopus and Thompson Reuters, ISI Web Science, these two are mandatory. Archives, often you will see that in, in bad journals, they will have no archives, their site will be crashing, it will redirect you to another website, and you will see irregular issues, many articles per issue, and mismatch of a scope and what they have published. So these are the problems you will see in archives and from the editorial board, there will be no editor-in-chiefs, no professional profile, maybe, hun maybe hundreds of editors, and no contact information of the journal. And there will be, this is the most crucial thing, that there will be no description of peer review some of them will claim that they do rigorous peer review within two weeks or something like that but that is also fake okay just because they write it uh, that doesn't mean they're doing it okay? so you have to be really careful and whenever they promise a publication date then that clearly says that they do not have any peer review process because if you have a peer review process you cannot uh, promise a publication date Special issues of good journals is a different issue, okay, is a different case. So special issues, uh, journal, uh, yeah, sometimes good journals, they organize these special issues on a particular topic, get studied by top professors of the field. There they, they mention some tentative dates for publication. That is a special case, okay, that's different from here. Affiliation. Claims fake affiliation with research center institutes and normally they will add Canadian, Australian, American, European in this kind of uh, words in their titles so that people from developing countries are like kind of uh, excited and fantasized about those journals and published there. And often these predatory journals will also offer predatory conferences on different topics on the same day on the same city. So be careful about predatory conferences as well. So what action you can take now? Remove all your predatory publications from your profile now. Try to use our checklist or some other checklist to assess the quality of the journal before you publish. We have quite a few videos on assessing uh, journal quality and, assess and, and selecting your, your target journal. So have a look on that. And try to publish in journals where top professors in your field are publishing. Top professors, they don't publish in bullshit journals. So try to follow them where they are publishing. If, or if you are a professor, please aware your students about predatory journals. Many are not doing it, especially from developing countries. I'm saying it again. And if you are a student and you have watched this video, tell your colleagues, aware your colleagues not to publish in predatory journals. Because by publishing in predatory journals, we are helping them to grow their business and we should not do that. Okay. Thank you for watching this video. If you find it useful, please hit a like. If you have some comments, write it below and please share it and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.